Can you build a ZX81 with all new parts in 2022? Let's find out. The ZX81 was released in March 1981. Produced by Sinclair Research, it was manufactured in Dundee, Scotland by Timex Corporation. Pricing was extremely competitive, with the ready-built machine retailing at $69.95 and the kit version retailing at just $49.95. In today's money, that's equivalent to approximately £290 and £210 respectively. The technical specs are somewhat lacking by today's standards and even back then were less than some of the ZX81's main competitors. The CPU was a Z80 running at 3.25 MHz. It had 1 KB of RAM, which was expandable to 16 with an external add-on memory pack. The ROM was 8 KB and was used for the basic interpreter and everything necessary to get the machine to run. The ULA chip was manufactured by Ferranti. This was known as the dog's body chip and contained all of the logic that glued the machine together. I want to attempt to build a replica or clone ZX81 in 2022 using all new parts. So, scavenging parts from old, dead or even working machines is out of the question. A large hurdle to overcome is the ULA, which stands for Uncommitted Logic Array. The ULA is no longer manufactured and so I need to source a modern alternative. The ULA is one way Sinclair kept the cost of the machine down and this was achieved by packaging all of the logic needed to run the ZX81 into a single chip and doing away with the need for handfuls of discrete logic chips. So this means that, in theory, I can do the opposite of Sinclair and populate a board with handfuls of ICs that are still being manufactured today and they can work together to do the same job as the ULA. Fortunately, the design and layout of a PCB that does just this has already been done by the RevSpace user Mahjong. And all of the KiCad files are available for download from Mahjong's GitHub page. This PCB is festooned in ICs that work together to do the job of the ULA and, of course, it also contains a Z80 CPU, ROM and RAM. In terms of size, the design is true to the original, but this new version has a joystick interface and no UHF modulator. Instead, this board gives a composite video out. Power requirements differ from the original in that this board has no regulator and instead requires a 5 volt DC supply. The choice of power connector is somewhat retro in itself, albeit from a different time period than the ZX81. The designer opted for a full-size USB Type-B socket. Next, it was time to get the PCBs manufactured. This is where PCBWay shine. PCBWay have sponsored this video and my build. Get quality PCBs manufactured with quantities starting from just five boards and a rapid turnaround. You'll be working on your build in next to no time. With a wide range of silkscreen colours to choose from, you can order boards to suit you. PCBWay prototype the easy way at PCBWay.com I went for a PCB in blue and a few days later it arrived and so I set to work soldering the components into place.
Next was the EEPROM. With the current chip shortage, I was unable initially to source a new EEPROM and so I used a new old stock 27C256 EEPROM. Since recording, I have found a modern replacement which I'll look at in a subsequent video. To program the EEPROM, download the ZX81 ROM image from the internet and use your favourite EEPROM programmer. Since I didn't want to bother with any of the jumper links on the PCB, I simply wrote the ROM image four times to the EEPROM. Define the EEPROM you are using. Select the ROM image and leave the settings to default. This will put the ROM image at location 0. Then, if we scroll down, you can see that the next 8K memory location starts here at 2000. So, I'll add the ROM image again, but starting at address 2000. I repeated this two more times at address 4000 and 6000. Then program the EEPROM. Since this style of EEPROM I am using has a window to erase it using UV light, I placed a sticker over the window to protect it from UV light. So now I have a working ZX81 clone in terms of operation, but not so much in looks. Unlike the ZX Spectrum 48K, replica cases for the ZX81 either don't exist or they are rarer than rocking horse poop. So, when I came across this case on Thingiverse by user Sagittario, I thought I'd give printing it a go. I'll be following up on how the print goes in another video or on social media. As for the keyboard, it is still possible to purchase newly made membrane keyboards for the ZX81, so I'm still toying with the idea of this. I suppose it depends on how well the case turns out. Right, let's take a quick look at using it. First thing, success, it boots. Next, let's try typing. Brilliant, so on the face of it, you can build a ZX81, at least a clone anyway, with new parts in 2022. Join me next time where I'll be looking at a case for the PCB and running some software on it as there is a plethora of new software available for the ZX81. As always, thanks for watching, take care and bye.